Kaserne vor dem großen Tor stand eine Laterne und steht sie noch davor. So wollen wir uns. They decided that it was worth a big advance. So half our platoon was sent to an area and they took off took our particulars away from us and the padre was there to wish us good luck and hope God looks after us. I thought, oh, I haven't had any of this before. And then we lined up and our orders were walk, trot and gallop. So we were in a long line. We had two Bofa guns and there was an armoured car with the officer in charge and we lined up. I was in the centre next to the brain guns. All my platoon were to my left and the other side of both our guns there was another line there. I suppose we covered oh, I suppose half a mile of in length and off we trudged across the desert. Not very fast. Presently, about, I say presently, it would be a couple of hours probably, I don't know. We were going very slowly. A spotter plane was seen up in the sky. <laughs> I said to the officer, looks like they know we're coming now. He said, it does, doesn't it? A quarter of an hour after that, over came the Stukas. So it was halt and die for cover. I dived out, I handed the officer his steel helmet and my, his tin hat, I had mine. Where I came out there was a camel shrub. Well that's a heap of sand coming out of a lot of sticks, looks like a lavender bush. And I stuck my head under there just for a bit of protection. I don't think it would have helped much but I did. And I watched these both both are guns. I think there's four men to a gun. They loaded clips of five, I believe. And they were firing at these Stukas. There's everybody else taking cover. And I think they were marvellous to sit there firing all this time. Eventually the Stukas left. And we all got back in our lorries and moved on. Expecting them to attack again. So we were all prepared. And they didn't come, which was rather funny. So when we got to our objective, we were ordered, we were in a wadi now, ordered to brew up, have your battle rations before we go in. We were a bit surprised when they were shelling. Bang, bang, what the hell, what's this? Don't worry, said the officer. We've got a battery of 25 pounders behind us and they're softening up the target. Oh, that's good. So after a short while, he said, perhaps I ought to go forward and see when we should advance. He disappeared. Next thing, he was coming down over the brow, waving his arms and shouting. Nobody knew what he was saying, but it was panic. And he was waving his arms, which meant start up. We did. Over went the water. We never got our tea. Everybody scrambled into the lorries and we were heading back. Definitely a gallop. Then we learned what it was. A panzer division had moved in overnight. And they didn't like being shelled so they were coming out after us. We were now spread all over the desert. Every man for himself it was. I know we lost the lorry there because two of our chaps came alongside me and they shouted out, You want to hurry up? They're still coming on, I can see them. Well, we got to an escarpment and we were told, Don't go up, the guns have got to go up first. So we sat at the bottom till the guns went up. It was a very steep escarpment. In fact, I thought I wasn't going to make it. But it did, and when we got to the plateau at the top, the officer pulled up and said to the sergeant, 
You better send some very lights up and see if we can get our folk, our lorries, our people in together. So we sent up either red over green or green over red, I forget now which it was. But as soon as we did that, there seemed to be very lights going up all over the place. Who they were, I don't know. But as we got some of our lorries coming in together and we set off back for our own lines, when we got there they wouldn't let us through because it was dark now. We could easily be the enemy using our lorries. But when it came daybreak, we had to sleep in the lorry. When daybreak came, a 1500-weight truck came out and had a look at us and then led us through the minefield. So that was that operation over. I thought it wasn't too bad. We were then ordered to leave the Green Howards and go further up the line, going north, up to the Free French. And our orders were to take a lot of supplies in because they were going to be under a siege. The idea was when the Germans attacked with their panzers they were to let them through because they were heading for the Egyptian desert then we had to break out and stop, cut their supplies off to stop their supplies getting through to them. Well it didn't work. Instead of the Germans going straight through into Egypt they encircled the French. So now 287 Company was called to save them, get them out. I didn't have to go in, I'm glad to say. They told me the French didn't want to come out, but they stayed. It was like a mini sandstorm there. I was held back in reserve, I don't know what for, but a few lorries did manage to get them out. But we were on the run now.